This is Plus TV Africa. Good morning and thank you for joining us on Off the Press, where we bring you the headlines from our national dailies. And we take a view, a quick look at reviews and analysis from guests joining us. And this morning, we'll be joined all the way from Aberdeen in Scotland by Aisha Yusufu, um, a human rights activist and a co convener at Bring Back Our Girls. Thank you, Aisha, for joining us on Off the Press. Thank you so much for having me. It's my pleasure being here. All right, now let's take a look at the headlines in the Punch newspaper this morning on Off the Press. Travel hospitality industry may not recover, Nasima warns. And Insecurity National Assembly summons NSA service chief's IG, DSS boss. Reps propose death sentence, castration, and amputation for rapists. Lagos about an expressway, second Niger bridge ready by 2020, says Fashola. And federal government threatens to ban church mocks gatherings again. Lagos approves church marks reopening June 19. And PTF worries over COVID-19 patients fleeing isolation centers. Now, Aisha, let, let's start off this way with the proposal of a death sentence, castration and amputation for rapists by, by the House of Reps. What is your thought on this? Uh, so my thought is that, uh, uh, like, I think I, I listened earlier on where I listened to one of the representatives of uh, Amnesty International, where she talked about the fact that, uh, look, it's first of all about, how do I put it this way, getting the perpetrators. If you're talking about the sentencing, how many people have actually been convicted before we even get there? It's about preventing these rapes. It's about ensuring that it doesn't happen. And also, what do we put in place to ensure we get them before we get to the uh, question of whether it should be a uh, death penalty or whether there, there should be castration? And first of all, I think, uh, in my own opinion, we should even see it as a crime. Because what is happening right now is that in our society, it's not even seen as a crime. It's just seen as, oh, one of those things. Can't you forgive? I remember a, a rape victim who recently had to say that her brother even said to her, oh, why are you still on this issue? Can't you just forgive a mistake? It's seen as a mistake, not the crime uh, that it should be. I think that's where our focus should be on uh, before we get to the uh, whether it should, it should be death penalty or whether it should be castration. And also joining us um, is Ify Oji. Thank you, Ify, for joining us on the newspaper review this morning of the press. Thank you very much, uh, Benny. Now, in your opinion, Ify, what would you say has allowed for so long this culture of rape where we constantly hear about girls, women, girls being raped in our society and not so much is done to the perpetrators, never brought to book, never brought to justice? I think for us, we have to ask ourselves some very hard questions, especially regarding uh, potentially decision makers and just the systemic nature and how in, in, in insidious uh, the culture is in Nigeria. I know, just, just to add to what Amhaji has just said as well, I, I, she, she's totally 100% correct. Uh, only one, in a data-driven society, in a data-rich society, it is inexcusable that we don't have a conviction rate. We don't have these figures that are accurate so that we can actually have a, a, a broader strategy in terms of trying to deal with this, this issue. So I, I feel that ultimately we have to really look when within our system, be it the judicial system, be it our, uh, on, on official patriarchal system, this system that is what are, 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 the, are the things that are letting us down. And if we're able to deal with it from the inside out, I think we have a short uh, a chance of hopefully trying to make a dent in this um, uh, um, bump that we're in. Now, if you're a legal practitioner, let, let's look at it from the legislation perspective. Now, many people have argued the fact that um, in, in a country where people give credence to religion to why they can marry minors, like, like the, the child bride and minors being married out at the age of 11, 12, 13, 14, that it might be hard by legislation to make sure that um, punitive measures are put in place. I, I need your legal um, expertise and contemplation on this. Again, I, I, I am a practitioner. I am an energy and finance practitioner, but I do understand the basics and the principles behind most laws, the norms of these laws. And what I will say to you is this, our, our, our penal code, our criminal code is letting us down. I, I think that there is a, the sense of history and culture and tradition and religion that is entrenched in our laws that we need to actually break. You know, there, that, that 
always going to be uh, entrenched in it if we don't have more female legislators who are sensitive to these issues. Um, and, and, and that is, and, and, and that's not even just talking about the legislators, even the, from the judiciary um, standpoint, which who have, who have traditionally have a higher rate of uh, female judges in higher positions. So I think if you combine the two, there is a chance of us trying to uh, solve this problem. Now, Aisha, I come, I come to you still on this issue quickly. I mean, by way of legislation, what, what would you propose? And given the fact that we've had bills like the, the child, the child, not a bride, and minors being given away in, in marriage, don't you think this compounds the whole situation in addressing the issue of rape? Well, it, it does in a way, but, but the thing is that uh, our, uh, the members of our legislative um, are also members of the society. And I, I think I remember a few years ago, there was a senator, a former governor, I think from Zamfara State, who actually married a, a young child, you know, who was reported to have married a young child, and there was a lot of uh, uproar over that. So when you have people who are in position, who are supposed to uh, legislate against these actually perpetrating the act, it becomes a whole lot difficult. And like uh, she rightly said, uh, uh, the fact that we need to have more people who are sensitive to these issues on ground. My take from the, uh, is, uh, from the religious point of view, I'm, I'm a Muslim, and one of the things that people will normally use to do this is to say, oh, it's allowed in Islam. Oh, the prophet married uh, 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 his wife, Anana Aisha, when she was when she was quite young. And forgetting the fact that, how, how many years was that, right? That's one. Notwithstanding that, the second most important thing is the fact that the prophet married a woman who was 15 to 20 years older than him as his first wife before he even went along to marry the other uh, uh, women that he did marry. So most of these people who are using that as excuse, how many of them have married women who are way older than they are and in the first instance? And when in everything, Islam is always about harm. Anything that has to do with harming another person that has negative uh, effect on another human being, it's not allowed. And so right now, girls are going through so much, it should be stopped. And there's a need for, for us to have uh, legislators who, who have the willpower to be able to say, look, enough is enough, we need to do the right thing. And by the time we bring in the law, everybody will be forced to, to, to obey the law. And that's just the way it is. All right, enough is enough and we need to do the right thing. Let's take a look at the headlines from the Nation newspaper this morning. Churches marks hotels to open in Lagos June 19. And government targets 5 million jobs with $1.2 billion scheme. Anger and House of Reps over rising insecurity. And service chiefs invited. Buhari, Fayami, Akiridolu, Tinubu, Mon, Olumilwa, NCDC patients without symptoms to go after 14 days. Um, this and more making the headlines in the nation newspaper. Churches and mocks hotels to reopen in Lagos June 19. Let's put on this a little bit. Ify, I come to you. The cases are rising and we're seeing the reopening of the places of worship. There's been so much clamor for the places of um, religious worship to be open. And one would have thought in the, like, in the likes of the science of the pandemic um, that the thought about opening our religious centers shouldn't come to fore at this point in time. What, what do you think is going on here, Ify? Uh, again, I would, what I would say, Benny, I think we all know, just based on the nature of what Nigeria as a country, that we are a, an economy that's driven by religion. So you've got a lot of money passes through these, uh, the, these religious um, uh, institutions, and it, it's quite sad that that is going to be, take precedence over what else, um, when our actual personal safety. Um, I, I know there was even an instance where one of the pastors had said that if we do not open, we are disobeying the uh, uh, God's command. I think that's a very insightful thing to say, and it's something that is going to actually evoke a lot of emotion because it's a religious. It's coming from a religious, religious standpoint. So it, 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 in, in a way, it becomes even more di um, divisive, and 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 it's not even helping the matters at all. We're trying to have a, a, a collective and unif uh, unified uh, information and process in how we're dealing with COVID. And having those kind of, um, making those sort of insightful um, statements will, will not help us to move forward or to progress as the case may be. Now, Aisha, uh, th there's, a science, there's a science to the pandemic. There's also the economics to the pandemic. And I remember an imam rightly saying that he cannot account, he cannot take responsibility for 20 people that might be behind him doing prayers. But here we are, the government's still going, the federal government has lifted up the ban, and Lagos, Lagos also, where, where we are, might be opening 
is already lifted the ban on religious gatherings. What are we getting right here? Or what are we not getting right? Uh, so for, for, uh, for us as a people, uh, what we do is that we, we abdicate our responsibilities to God. So the things that we, God has given us the capacity to do for ourselves, we refuse to do them. And we always think that prayer is everything that we use to solve everything. And I always say to people that, look, God will not do for us what he has given us the capacity to do for ourselves. And that's where our Nigerian religiosity comes in. And, and like somebody rightly said, they we are religious, but God bless people. Because the amount of atrocities that happen in our country and the amount of this religiosity that we carry on our head, if it were, we, they were supposed to have been uh, an impact where you won't see as much uh, atrocities. So people are more interested in the fact that they just want to come out and have their gather and worship. And you know, we always feel as if it's when we are out there doing this religious, if that's where we are, are really being religious. If I, might, if, I don't know if I'm making sense uh, in, in that way. Yeah. Uh, but the most important thing, and I think the government should be responsible. It's not about what the people are saying. It's not about what these religious institutions are saying. It's about what is right for the people, what is right for everybody. And like you did say, like the Imam rightly said, that's just the way it is. For me, I'm a Muslim. And one of the things that uh, in Islam, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that whenever there is uh, a, a, an epidemic, like what we have now, a pandemic, or an epidemic that you are not supposed to leave you're not even supposed to leave the place if you're already in that place you're not supposed to leave the town and you're not supposed to go there if you're not already there so in case of this thing like the imam rightly said he's, he will be held accountable if anything anybody that co comes in to get you open the mouth you're praying that people come in and somebody gets the disease he will be held accountable even if he's not held accountable before the law here but he will be before god and this it's very important. We need to be responsible as citizens. You don't have to be in the church or in the box for God to know that you're praying to him. We all say, God, God is all-knowing. God is everywhere. God is with us. So why do we feel that we have to be in our religious places for God to hear us? Uh, let's take a look at the headlines from the Guardian newspaper this morning. And in the Guardian newspaper this morning, the first headline, unusual worship in Lagos State as Mark's churches reopened June 12th. And also federal government to stimulate economy with $10 billion agri fund. Expert accused WHO of encouraging smoking to waste more lives. And DPO seven officers killed in Kogi State Bank robbery. Reps declare emergency on rape, violence against women and others. And this cuts across most of the national dailies today and also the unusual the opening of places of religion, and it seems to be an issue. And still in the Guardian, Nigeria may lose 24 councils to new UN state or Basanjo Bia concede territories in 2003. This and more making the headlines in the Guardian newspaper. Now, let, let's debut a little bit on the issue of rape because it, it comes across most, most of the dailies this morning. Now, um, if I, I come to you, there's, there's, there's a culture of shame that has been prevalent when it comes to, to victims who come out to speak that they've been, they've been, they've been raped. Um, the, the first response you get, and mostly from their kind, is what were you doing there? What did you wear? There's always the first thing is to blame the victim. How do we begin to address this narrative and changing it to putting the, the spotlight on blaming the perpetrators and actually bringing them to book? I think it's a, a way of we have to start looking at how to re-educate uh, uh, our society at large. I mean, we've moved on and we've made a lot of progress in, in terms of women taking a lot of important positions in Nigeria, um, you know, within the corporate world, even within uh, different assets uh, uh, within society. So I feel that it, it's obviously a cultural thing. If I say to you today that I was raped, I can imagine, I can imagine the next day I, would, I will not feel comfortable being in a particular environment, especially a, a male-dominated en, en, environment, where you're seen as weak, you're seen as almost like a vixen like, of trying to lure the men. And I don't think that's uh, the right way to go about it. So if we're able to en, um, encourage, educate, and uh, evaluate each situation in its own merit, I think we'll... we'll, we'll... Now, Aisha, many people have been blamed the patriarchal system in place for most of these ills and... Um, adverse things happening to the women folk. And majorly for me, if I understand patriarchy very well, it's, it's meant to protect, it's meant to guide, it's meant to provide leadership, it's, it's, it's visionary. 
in the context of all what is happening, do you think there's a need for us to redefine patriarchy in the light of recent happenings? Well, the, the patriarchy that I, that I know of is the one that has a sense of entitlement and feels that they're there to dominate and uh, enslave everybody uh, 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 around them. And that's what, the, what we face as women o over the, the centuries and uh, over uh, the years. Uh, most coming, just looking at this issue, the most important thing is the fact that rape is not seen as a, the crime that it is. For example, if somebody's car is stolen, nobody ever says to the person, why did you buy a flashy car? Why do you have such good looking car? Of any, if your house is broken into, nobody blames the victim. But when a woman is raped, and this is something that is a heinous crime, we need to first of all begin to let people understand the heinousness of it. And then another thing also is that because a lot of people take part in the rape, uh, in, the, in the rape culture, in one way or the other, they tend to not want to admit to the fact that they have committed a crime in one way or the other. For example, date rape is not seen as, as rape. It's seen as, oh, it's your boyfriend, it's your girlfriend, you were together, and then you, you, she said, no, so what, you raped her, and it's okay. So because people are taking part in this uh, 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 the culture, uh, uh, the rape culture, they don't want to admit to what it is. So it is easier to blame the victim. And uh, for example, a woman is told, what were you wearing? What were you done? I'm like, what business of yours is it? What I was wearing, it's my business to wear the hijab if I want to, and it's my business to wear mini if, if I want to. It's my body, my choice of dressing, and nobody else's business. I've, I've had, I've seen a situation, I've I think I saw a report where a nine-year-old girl was raped, and the, 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 she was actually blamed. They said she used she shaped her bum bum too much. Who does that? We need to begin to define this thing, and I think it's most important. We have to do it at, uh, legislative, not just the legislative arm, the uh, judici uh, judiciary. We must begin to look at policing, the investigation. We must begin to ensure that everything is put together. We must begin to ensure that there's real forensic investigation in, in, in getting those people and ensuring that they actually face, uh, face the, the wrath of the law. Uh, lastly, let's take a look at the headlines in the Tribune newspaper for this morning. In the Tribune newspaper this morning, Edo Goba states to choose type of primaries. State APC chairman insists Obasaki's information commissioner resigns and also suit one Izayamo waiver continues June 17. Eight policemen, one civilian feared killed in Kogi Bank robbery. Ex-Ondo governor Olumilua dies at 80. And YCE, Tunubu, Fire Me, Faoche, others mourn. And Senate probes 1.8 trillion Naira power intervention fund. CBN Ministry of Finance, Presidential Power Initiative, the TCN, others to appear. Um, this and more making the headlines in the Tribune this morning. Subpoena as Biosa Deputy Governor appears at Tribunal. How 21 people were killed in Zamfara attacks. WHO restarts hydroxychloroquine trial. And proposal to fund police with 0.5% of federation account illegal, says the RMA, RMAFC. And police arrest three brothers for murder of mother and five lord via Facebook. Mocks churches to open only on Friday, Sunday in Lagos from June 19 at 40% of maximum capacity. PTF says as asymptomatic patients can be discharged for 10 days after first positive cases at 40% maximum capacity. Let's put on that finally in just a few. I'm iffy. Now, many people have argued the fact at 40% maximum capacity of how many congregations? I mean, there, there are churches that have about 5,000 congregations. There are churches with just 50 people. And if you're asking people to gather at 40% maximum capacity, and given the fact we have people amongst us who are, are asymptomatic, this definitely will just further increase the, the community spread we're trying to curtail. Don't you agree with me, Ife? Uh, I absolutely agree with what you're saying, Benny. I think, I think that it's a mistake to have, um, to open the churches. I, I mean, I've said it before on this show, and I'll say it again. I think we, uh, just like Hadi had also said as well, we need to, be, uh, uh, what, we need to take our own uh, personal uh, health uh, as priority more than more so than anything else so uh, them opening it's dubious for me why they would want to open churches knowing full well how full capacity the churches are going to be nobody's going to listen to uh the idea of having its 40 percent capacity the, the whole object is to bring as many people to the fold 
So I, 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 I struggle to really make sense of how this is going to um, work. I guess we're going to have to see how it's going to play out. But as far as I'm, I'm concerned and people around me are concerned, I think it's still safer to stay indoors and worship from afar. All right, finally, Aisha, um, Aisha Yusufu, your, your parting shots on this issue, please. Uh, well, uh, on this issue, uh, for me, like uh, I've said before, uh, there's really no need of opening the churches and, and, the, and the mosques, right, uh, all the religious institutions. And uh, looking at them, thinking of that, I think the, the essence of the 40% for them is that, okay, they will have space to be able to do the uh, uh, social distancing. But we know the reality of it. When people get into that mode, they're not going to remember any of those. But before I go on, I just want to uh, talk about a little bit about two things. One is the insecurity in the, in the country. We've talked about a lot of people being killed. Uh, so many people, police uh, men, uh, police officers have been killed. Individuals have been killed all over. You look at the pages, it's killing, killing, killing. And the question always is, where is the president? Where is the commander in chief? He needs to, he needs to understand that he was voted to protect the lives and properties of every Nigeria. And that needs, that needs to be done. We cannot go on with all of these killings going on in our, in our country. And finally, uh, on another issue that we didn't talk about is about this issue of uh, uh, government creating jobs, all the schemes around a uh, $1.2 billion uh, dollar scheme to uh, create 1.5 million uh, jobs and all of that. I think government needs to understand that it's not job creation, it's not just about throwing money into things. There is a need for enabling environment for businesses to grow. And as long as we're not giving an enabling environment for small and medium-scale businesses to grow, we'll continue to grapple with this issue of job uh, creation. Oh. And most of these funds, they need to understand that it's for all Nigeria, it's not just for a few who have connections. Okay. Thank all you right. very much. Human rights activists and co-convener bring back our girls, Aisha Yusufu. Thank you for joining us on Of The Press and for your contribution. Thank you for having me. And also social commentator Ifi Oji, thank you for your time, Ifi, and for your contribution on the show. Thanks, Benny. And that's all we can take this morning on Of The Press. Of The Press is out for this week. Join us again next week, same time, for more on our headlines and reviews. This is Plus TV Africa, and I am Benny Ark. Good morning.